Hi everyone. A battleship like the USS Missouri was more than just a war machine, it was a floating city, with nearly 2,700 crew members working together to ensure smooth operations in both combat and daily life. Every action, from tracking enemy movements to issuing firing orders, depended on a well-structured command system. But how did the crew manage such an enormous war machine? In this section, we will explore how Missouri's crew coordinated their actions, the crucial role of the Combat Information Center CIC, in processing battlefield intelligence, and how advanced radar and optical systems provided vital situational awareness. These systems ensured that Missouri could detect threats, engage targets with precision, and maintain strategic dominance on the high seas. At the heart of this coordination was the ship's command structure. Orders flowed from the captain and senior officers down through division officers, chief petty officers, and enlisted sailors, ensuring that every task, whether launching an attack or maintaining the ship's engines, was carried out with precision. During combat, communication was key. Orders were relayed through sound-powered telephones, voice tubes, and internal communications networks, allowing different sections of the ship to stay informed and react quickly. The Combat Information Center CIC, served as Missouri's nerve center, where radar operators, intelligence officers, and strategists worked together to process incoming data and guide the ship's movements and firepower. Gunnery crews depended on fire control teams to relay targeting information, while engineers kept the ship's propulsion running smoothly. Even damage control teams were constantly on standby, ready to respond to fires, flooding, or structural damage in battle. Despite its massive size, the USS Missouri functioned like a well-oiled machine, with every crew member playing a critical role. Whether in battle or on long voyages across the Pacific, coordination was essential to keeping the battleship combat ready at all times. Deep inside the armored hull of USS Missouri lay one of the most vital nerve centers of the battleship, the Combat Information Center, or CIC. This was the ship's brain, where all battlefield data was gathered, analyzed, and transformed into actionable intelligence for commanding officers. During battle, the CIC was responsible for coordinating the ship's defenses, tracking enemy movements, and ensuring that all weapon systems were operating at peak efficiency. Operators inside the CIC received constant updates from radar stations, sonar equipment, optical lookouts, and intelligence reports. This allowed them to create a real-time tactical picture of the surrounding battlefield. The CIC's main functions included Enemy detection and threat assessment Using long-range SK-2 air search radar and SG surface search radar, the CIC could detect enemy aircraft and ships long before they came into visual range. Radar operators continuously updated enemy positions, tracking their speed and heading. Fire control support Data from the CIC was relayed to the MK-38 and MK-37 fire control systems, ensuring that the main and secondary batteries could accurately engage targets even in low visibility conditions. Anti-aircraft coordination. The CIC directed 5-inch dual-purpose guns and Bofors 40mm anti-aircraft batteries, prioritizing incoming enemy aircraft and ensuring an effective layered defense. Fleet Coordination USS Missouri did not fight alone, radio communication specialists inside the CIC maintained constant contact with other ships in the battle group, relaying orders and receiving new mission objectives from the fleet commander. Perhaps the greatest test of the CIC came during kamikaze attacks in the Pacific Theater. When enemy aircraft were spotted on radar, the CIC immediately went into action, tracking their approach, calculating intercept points, and directing anti-aircraft gunners to open fire at the right moment. 
In an era where battles were increasingly decided by superior coordination and information rather than brute force alone, the Combat Information Center gave USS Missouri the edge it needed to remain one of the most formidable warships of World War II. To dominate the battlefield, USS Missouri relied on a sophisticated combination of radar and optical systems, which worked together to detect threats, track targets, and guide its powerful guns with precision. The battleship was equipped with multiple radar types, each serving a specific function. SK-2 Air Search Radar SG Surface Search Radar MK-8 Fire Control Radar MK-37 Gun Director Radar, MK-4 and MK-12, 22. The radar of each type mentioned above has been discussed in detail in the previous videos. Watch them to learn more. Thanks to radars, USS Missouri was never blind on the battlefield. It could engage targets beyond the horizon, track incoming threats, and coordinate attacks with other ships in the fleet. While radar provided long-range detection, optical systems remained vital for close-range combat and fine-tuned targeting. Located inside the fire control towers, rangefinders measured the distance to enemy ships, helping to confirm radar data and improve gunnery accuracy. Gunners used periscopes to visually track targets, ensuring proper alignment before firing the main or secondary guns. Lookout stations, positioned across the superstructure, had trained sailors who scanned the horizon with binoculars, identifying threats that radar might have missed, such as small, fast-moving enemy boats or low-flying aircraft. Radar could detect targets at long range, but optical systems provided detailed confirmation and fine adjustments for precise gunnery. Life aboard the USS Missouri was a structured and disciplined experience. Aboard the Missouri, the day started early. Reveille, the traditional wake-up call, sounded at 6 o'clock hours, marking the start of the day. After morning roll call and hygiene, sailors reported to their assigned stations, whether it was on deck, in the engine room, or at the ship's weapons systems. Most of the crew operated on a watch system, meaning they worked in shifts to ensure the battleship remained fully operational 24-7. Some rotated between four-hour shifts, while others had duty rotations depending on their department. In combat situations, schedules became even more intense, with sailors sometimes working for 12 to 16 hours straight. Despite the tough conditions at sea, the Missouri's mess halls ensured that the crew received nutritious and filling meals. With a crew of nearly 2,700 men, feeding everyone was a massive logistical challenge. The battleship's scallies operated almost non-stop, preparing three hot meals a day, along with coffee and snacks. Breakfast typically included eggs, bacon, toast, and oatmeal, while lunch and dinner often featured meat, potatoes, vegetables, and fresh baked bread. Storage and supply management were crucial. The ship carried months worth of canned and dry goods, but fresh produce and dairy products were limited. Resupply missions at sea, known as underway replenishments, were essential to keep the crew well fed. Most enlisted sailors slept in bunk beds stacked three or four high, with only a small personal locker for storage. The ship's berthing compartments were loud and crowded, making sleep difficult, especially during battle conditions. Officers had more comfortable quarters, with small but private rooms, while the captain and senior officers had more spacious living spaces, including separate lounges and dining areas. For recreation, sailors had limited options. Some read books, wrote letters home, or played card games and checkers. On occasion, movies were shown in designated areas when operational conditions allowed. A battleship had its own fully equipped medical facilities. The sick bay functioned like a small hospital, staffed by Navy doctors and corpsmen, handling everything from minor illnesses to battlefield injuries. 
the ship had a surgical operating room, a pharmacy, and a dental office to take care of the crew's health. In case of severe injuries, especially during combat, Missouri's medical team had to perform emergency surgeries right at sea, stabilizing patients until they could be transferred to a hospital ship or a land-based medical facility. Keeping the USS Missouri operational required constant maintenance. The ship had specialized repair crews, including machinists, electricians, pipefitters, and metal workers, who could weld, fix broken systems, and even rebuild damaged compartments while at sea. Life aboard the USS Missouri was a balance of discipline, hard work, and camaraderie. The USS Missouri, BB-63, like other Iowa-class battleships, was designed to operate for extended periods without returning to port. This autonomy was critical for sustained naval operations, allowing the ship to travel thousands of miles across the Pacific during World War II, the Korean War, and beyond. But staying operational at sea required a carefully coordinated system of logistics, power generation, water purification, resupply, and self-sufficiency in everything from maintenance to medical care. At the core of Missouri's ability to remain at sea was its powerful propulsion system. However, sustaining this performance required vast amounts of fuel. The Missouri carried over 7,800 tons of fuel oil, allowing it to steam for thousands of miles. Under normal cruising conditions at 15 knots, the ship had a range of approximately 15,000 nautical miles. To extend its endurance, Missouri relied on underway replenishment, a vital operation where fuel tankers would match speed with the battleship, transferring fuel via hoses while both ships moved in tandem. Missouri needed fresh water not only for its 2,700 crew members but also for its boilers, which required pure distilled water to generate steam efficiently. The ship was equipped with evaporators, also known as distillers, capable of converting seawater into fresh water. These systems could produce up to 100,000 gallons of fresh water per day. Feeding a crew of nearly 3,000 men required an immense amount of food. Missouri's refrigerated and dry storage compartments were packed with canned goods, flour, rice, beans, and other non-perishable items, as well as frozen meat and dairy products. Fresh fruits and vegetables, however, were limited and had to be consumed quickly before spoiling. Just like with fuel, Missouri's food stocks were replenished at sea via supply ships. A battleship like Missouri carried a vast arsenal of main gun shells, anti-aircraft rounds, and other munitions. To remain battle-ready, Missouri took part in underway replenishment of ammunition, where specially equipped supply ships delivered shells, powder bags, and small arms ammunition while underway. The ship had its own machine shops, metalworking facilities, and electrical repair stations to fix broken equipment on the go. Specialized teams of machinists, welders, and electricians were on board to handle emergency repairs. In combat, the damage control teams played a critical role in sealing hull breaches, extinguishing fires, and restoring power to damaged sections. When serious repairs were needed, Missouri could rendezvous with tender ships, floating workshops that provided spare parts and additional technical support. The ship was equipped with radio, radar, and encrypted communication systems to coordinate with the fleet. The Combat Information Center processed real-time intelligence, tracking aircraft, ships, and submarines to ensure the Missouri remained combat-ready at all times. Throughout this video, we've explored the inner workings of the USS Missouri, one of the most powerful battleships of World War II. We've examined how the ship's combat information center and command systems coordinated its actions, how sailors lived and worked on board, and how Missouri maintained autonomy at sea, ensuring it could operate far from port for extended periods. 
Missouri was more than just a battleship, it was a floating city, a war machine, and a symbol of American naval power. The dedication of its crew, the advanced technology of its time, and its ability to sustain itself in the vastness of the ocean made it a true force to be reckoned with. In the next part of our series, we'll dive into Missouri's combat role, exploring how the battleship was used in major engagements and its devastating firepower, its role in supporting amphibious landings and shore bombardments during wartime operations, how Missouri defended itself against enemy submarines and aircraft, showcasing its layered defenses. And finally, we look at Missouri's modern status as a museum ship, preserving its legacy for future generations. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the USS Missouri, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss the next chapter in our series. Stay tuned, and we'll see you in the next episode.